In this video, I'll give you the top waiver wire players to target heading into week seven. I'm Jim Coventry of Roto Wire. Let's start with the quarterback position. If you're in a single quarterback league and somehow Caleb Williams is still on the waiver wire, get him off the waiver wire. He's had three cupcake matchups. I understand, but he makes progress every week. He understands how the pressure in the pocket's coming, when to get rid of the ball. He's averaging 45 rushing yards over his last two games. The young man's coming on. Drake May of the New England Patriots is next. In his career debut, yeah, a little rough. Played a tough defense. Didn't do great, but three touchdown passes. And that said, he ran for 38 yards. So look, in a super flex league, if for somehow he's not rostered, he also needs to be because he, with his running ability, and he has a connection with Demario Douglas, maybe even Keishon Butte, looks good. Next, Spencer Rattler of the New Orleans Saints. The second half was brutal against Tampa Bay with all the pressure. But in the first half, no Chris Olave. Knocked out with a concussion early. Reasonable numbers. Ran for some yardage. Threw for 240 yards. Threw an early touchdown pass. He's a useful quarterback, and if they have to score some points with a team that doesn't blitz as much, Spencer Rattler might be a good short-term option while Derek Carr is out in two quarterback leagues, of course. Next, weekly reminder, if because we thought Anthony Richardson was going to play this week, if somehow Joe Flacco was put back to the waiver wire, don't know if he's going to start again, but I'm not sure that Anthony Richardson is hurt anymore. And if that's the case, Joe Flacco continues to win games and is a fantasy force, so again, keep him on the roster until you know for sure that Anthony Richardson is not back in a full-time role. Look, next, speculative ad. Mason Rudolph of the Titans. Not a great quarterback, but Will Levis had a disastrous performance against the cupcake defense of the Colts. At some point, the Titans are going to lose their locker room. Rudolph could give them better play, could help the receivers. Again, in a two-quarterback league, make a speculative ad of Mason Rudolph. Finally, don't know if this is going to happen either. Another speculative ad. But Nick Chubb's supposed to come back. If that's the case, and this offense has a chance. The Browns, is there a long shot they go to Jameis Winston? I'd add him with a speculative hope. Because if Chubb comes back, they have Amari Cooper. The offensive tackles are finally healthy. Maybe Winston gives them a jolt. Don't know that'll happen. This could be the week. Running back position. Damian Pierce looked great in his return from injury. Eight carries, 76 yards and a touchdown. Yeah, long touchdown late. We'll take it. He appears as he was early in the season, week one. He was the change of pace runner to Joe Mixon. It should and could provide some flex value for your fantasy team. Next, Tyler Goodson of the Indianapolis Colts. Jonathan Taylor may continue to miss more time, but we saw in the last few games playing behind Trey Sermon, Goodson's averaging 10 touches and 61 yards. So again, if you need a plug-in for week Seven, if Jonathan Taylor's out, Goodson could be your player. Isaac Garendo of the 49ers could be a solid fill-in if Jordan Mason with that shoulder injury misses time. He heard it on a Thursday night. We're not sure what the deal is. That said, I know Garendo had a super late, long touchdown run to get in the 99 yards on 10 carries, but any running back on the 49ers who has a lead role is worth a fantasy stash. And again, I don't think Christian McCaffrey's going to be back very, very soon. Could be a little bit. Garendo could be a nice plug-in play. Don Tucker of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Don't know where this came from. He looked at kick returns earlier in the year. 192 yards and two touchdowns on 17 touches. Rashad White was out. So what we saw was we saw Tucker moving to that second role behind his, you know, as a backup running back man, Bucky Irving. And it was a great game. Now, I don't know if Rashad White misses more time, but if he does, we, we should probably think that we're going to see Tucker in a split timeshare with Irving. He may have some value. I don't know if he pushes his way into a long-term role, but for right now, he could be useful soon. Kimani Vidal of the Los Angeles Chargers. He caught a long touchdown pass, was a distant, distant, distant number two behind J.K. Dobbins in the Chargers offense, but Gus Edwards is on the IR. Dobbins doesn't have the greatest injury history. Vidal showed a little something, might be worth a speculative ad. The Ernest Johnson of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Travis Etienne goes down with a hamstring in the week six game. And the Ernest Johnson gets more touches than the week's waiver wire darling Tank Bigsby. And Johnson actually had more yardage. If Etienne misses time, we already know they like to split this backfield. So the Ernest Johnson could be in a split timeshare backfield. And that could be something that could be fantasy useful. Next, Audric Estime of the Denver Broncos. Season debut, two carries, 13 yards. Number three running back for the Broncos. But look, it's not like Javante Williams has been the greatest. And Jaleel McLaughlin's been a bit player. 
it, there could be a world where Estime plays well enough to work his way into a role. He's a speculative ad, but again, may have some return later. Amir Abdullah, <laughs> Las Vegas Raiders. If Zamir White continues to miss time, if you just need a few points, you're in a deep league, you've just got to get somebody in the lineup if there's a bye week or an injury, he may get you something, make you a couple targets, a couple carries. He had a touchdown last week. This week, no. But again, he's just something. Finally, speculative ad. Marshawn Light of the Green Bay Packers could come off the injured reserve at some point soon. We know they've been splitting that backfield throughout. So if Lloyd moves back into that role, he could have fantasy value. Hey, if you enjoy videos like this, please consider hitting the like button and subscribe to the RotoWire Fantasy Football channel on YouTube. Also, you can check out all of our fantasy football content in the rankings. You get a free two day trial, no credit card needed. Head on over to RotoWire.com slash Jim. You can check out all of our content. Let's go to the wide receiver position. If Keenan Allen was dropped, and look, he didn't have more than 33 yards in a game un until this week. And against the Jaguars, it was only 41 yards, but he scored two touchdowns. That said, maybe he's still working his way back from injury. Caleb Williams is getting better by the week. Keenan Allen's back on the radar. Demario Douglas of the New England Patriots. Excellent in Drake May's debut. We kind of thought that'd be the outlet pass, the slot receiver. Six catches, 92 yards and a touchdown. Drake May is probably going to be under a lot of pressure. Demario Douglas in the slot could have a lot of fantasy usefulness in PPR leagues. Next, Rashad Bateman of the Baltimore Ravens. At least 58 yards in the last two games, averaging four and a half targets per game. The Ravens are showing now they can get the run game and pass game going. Not a high upside guy, but he does get used in the red zone as well. Next, getting a little bit deep here, Juju Smith-Schuster. Last week, we pushed him. They were on a bye last week. If he wasn't picked up, I still contend they need a possession receiver with Rashi Rice out, and I believe Juju Smith-Schuster best fits that role. He's not going to get those 100-yard games every week like he had against the Saints, but I do think, remember, in 2022, he had seven games and over 70 yards through week 14. We could see that level of production. Next, now we're going to dig a little deeper here. Tim Patrick of the Detroit Lions. Denver lets him go in the offseason. Patrick had two for 52 in week five. He had 68 yards before they took their foot off the gas in week six. He may not be a high volume guy, but if you're in a real deep league and you need somebody, he is part of that offense. Not a big part, but he's part. Tayshawn Boutte of the New England Patriots. Only three targets in Drake May's debut, but he catches them all. 59 yards and a touchdown. There's a chance the rookie quarterback has a connection to Boutte. If that's the case, he may lean on him. So again, we don't put a lot of stock in the Patriots offense, but they're probably going to have to throw. That defense has lost a lot of people. Bub means New Orleans takes. If Chris Olave misses another game with a concussion, he got knocked out early, means slid into that role. Five of eight targets hauled in, 45 yards and a touchdown. If he's going to play the X role, if Olave misses, there could be one week value there. Tight end position. Look, if he's somehow out there, maybe not. Cole Komet, last four games, he has been an amazing fantasy option. He went off for a pair of touchdowns in week six. Caleb Williams getting better. Komet right now, he's looking like he's a stable and strong fantasy option. Kate Otten continues to get it done for the Tampa Bay Bucks. 27 targets over the last four games. He had been getting yardage, at least 44 yards in three straight games. This in week six, he didn't get the yardage, but he found the end zone. Productive tight end. We don't have a lot of those weekly in fantasy football. Next, again, if Mark Andrews was dropped in some leagues, now he's had over 50 yards in three of the last five games and in the last two, and he scored this week. Last week, he would have scored, but Lamar Jackson threw the ball behind him. Would have been an easy touchdown. He's not going to get it done every week, but Mark Andrews is still a talented player. Dalton Schultz of the Houston Texans is next. Since Nico Collins went down in week five, in the seventh tar quarter since Collins went down, Dalton Schultz has seen 14 targets. He has an elevated scoring floor as long as Collins is out. Hunter Henry's next. Hate to keep preaching the Patriots here, but again, they're going to trail. Drake May's going to throw. Henry had five targets in Drake May's first game. It's possible he becomes a floor play. Grant Calcaterra's next. Dallas Goddard goes down three plays into the week six game and a hamstring injury. Could be an injury at means this time. If he does, Calcaterra goes four for 67. Don't know that he has upside every week, but he could be a part of that offense if Goddard misses time. Finally, if Joe Flacco remains the starter in Indy, Mo Ali Cox, two straight games. He's averaging three catches, 39 yards and a half a touchdown. Flacco clearly likes him. Deep, 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 deep league ad, only a Flacco play. 